Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nano with Zedon. I'm your host, I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this next match is going to be between Liko and X36 against Ikins and Dynefreund on Vals Marineris. Which is probably more appropriate for 2v2. I mean, it's not the most Zero K map. But yeah, for 2v2, definitely better than 1v1 in this case. I have seen 1v1 on this map, it's kind of weird. I mean, it generally goes very bot-focused because of the terrain, but then it just gets this weird setup of where to attack. 2v2 it works a bit better just because of the size of the thing. Anyway, looks like Dynefreund going for gunships with Icons going for Clokybot Factory against S36 with the Spiderbot Factory and Liko with Shieldbot Factory. No surprise, spiders on all sides. I mean, bots on all sides. Except for the gunship. We don't actually see a huge amount of gunships in 2v2. Well, okay, decent amount of gunship air start in 2v2. It happens occasionally. Anyway, Diamond Friend with Banshees right off the bat. This should be scattered up fairly quickly. S36 has no real... Whoa, really? There's nothing. There's nothing stopping this. There's no defenses at all. I was going to say no real resistance. And then, indeed, there is no real resistance. These fleas could go right in here. Get killed by Banshees. Okay, never mind. But there's no defenses. Actually, this second fleet here should be able to get rid of the radar right away. Except, of course, Iken's commander is the one up front. Okay, never mind. Never mind. But still, the flea saw what it needed to see. That's the important thing. That's always the important thing with fleas. They're there for information, not necessarily to kill things. Killing things is a bonus. It's not a necessary bonus, but it's a bonus. It's nice to have. Is that just the yeah, attack in the ground? Just hoping to hit, and it did. Interesting. I've never actually seen someone use someone attack. Was that attack ground? I think it was attack ground, because one of them missed. And I'm pretty sure that the flea wasn't visible, so at that point, it's basically just attack. Oh, no, no, it would have been visible, because it would have been damaged. Oh, well, that was a weird edge case. I've never seen that happen before. Like, hitting a borrowed unit like that. Anyhow. Continuing on, we have... Sh finally, finally, Liko's Bandits coming in the south here. Not finding anything, though, because the GBC has just taken the northeast and left the southwest alone. Which will actually give the West team a bit of an advantage, because now the West team will have a much easier time just taking all these metal extractors, colonizing the entire West side. Whereas the GBC, they can be locked out of the Southeast. It's going to take a bit of effort from the West team, but yeah, GBC could be locked out of the Southeast entirely. They're very focused on this one corner. In a 3v3, that would make a lot of sense. In a 2v2, it's very risky. At this point, though, Banshee's coming into... S36's bases. Well, base. There's only one, because that's how the game works. Actually, both GBC members are attacking S36 directly, and the commander taking a fair amount of damage, the economy taking a lot of damage. Glaive's coming in as well, and I, this is actually enough to kill. Except for this Tarantula. Hero Tarantula coming in to save the day. Stopping both Banshees, because if that hadn't happened, the commander would have died. And at this stage in the game, that's a bit of a blow. As in, it's very damaging. Don't have that happen, if you can avoid it at all. And Liko not really microing his bandits all that much. A little bit. Still managed to win the engagement, but I think that Dying Friend will be able to take the southeast without reinforcements coming in from the west team. If reinforcements come in from the west team, it should be fine. Dying Friend won't be able to take the southeast. And at this point, the west team does have an economic advantage. Liko doesn't seem to be expanding as much in the back as S36 is. I'm guessing S36 is just handling all the backyard expansion while Liko's handling all the offense. That's how they're splitting all the duties here. At the same time, it looks like Iken's taking the north while Dimefriend slowly but surely taking the southeast. There's no resistance anymore. The southeast is basically open. Liko is sending a few more bandits. That might do the trick. Overall, though, it looks like southeast is open. GBC's going to take that. And while the western team does have an economic advantage, it may not last. And Liko's commander very up front in the center. What does it have right now? Machine gun. So basically trying to preempt all the glaives. Not a bad idea. And glaives coming in to Liko's base. Icons. They probably will pull away from this attack. Yeah, pulling away from the attack. I think they might be trying to pull away all these bandits. Get them out of position. And going for the commander directly. Liko's commander getting flanked hard. I mean, the machine gun's there. That'll help a ton. That's basically stopping Ikens from doing any real damage. So very good choice on the machine gun there. 
I mean, when you're dealing with a map like this, when there's going to be bots everywhere, the machine gun's just a good choice. Light particle beam's also okay, but machine gun's probably the best when you know you're going to have raiders coming around. On a map like this, it's basically all raider game for most of the game, so a machine gun works well. I mean, the commander probably won't die attending glaives. Not more... Well, okay. Not likely it'd be like 20, 30 glaives required to do so. The Banshees are still a bit of a threat, but there's a lot of anti-air here. A couple Defenders, a couple Vandals, and of course, it's not like the Machine Gun can't do a good job against Banshees either, so... Good choice all around. So GBC falling behind economically, now 10 metal per second behind, roughly. Yeah, Lico taking that backyard as well, so this is going nicely. At the same time, though, GBC is taking their own backyard. The southeast a little bit away from the factories, which is still kind of the problem. Dying Thrones Commander is there, that's what they need to have. Because if anything attacks the Southeast, Diamond Thrones Commander is basically the only line of defense. Granted, they are air units that would be coming in nearby, but still, that's it. Banshees and Diamond Thrones Commander. If anti-air comes in with these bandits, and it won't, but the bandits I think are enough. I think there's enough here with 11. But yeah, Vandals came in as well. There'd be nothing Diamond Throne could do, and Icons is way too far away to help. The Warriors would take a minute at least to get in. Dying would lose most of their Southeast at the time. So at this point, Western team just sitting pretty. Redback set up already to help get rid of these Banshees. It will probably... Oh no, it won't go down. The Banshee's actually being scared away. And one... No! Wow, that was close. One of those was one shot away from death. Did not get hit by the Bandle Missile, though. Or Tarantula Missile, rather. Then there we go, there are the bandits coming into the southeast. Should be able to tear it apart, and that basically stops the GBC from having economic parity with the western team here. Liku doing a nice shot. Wow, Dimefront already throwing in the towel. Already figuring there's no way out of this. I mean, losing the southeast is pretty big, because of course the bandits can come in, just sweep north, and there's not much the Banshees can do about them. The bandits can just wreck a bunch of territory, a bunch of economy, and, I mean, yeah, they'll die eventually, but that'll be a lot of damage being set up. Yeah, another Metal Extractor down. More Metal Extractors down. I mean, if this commander goes down, I would almost say, yeah, resign is pretty much inevitable. But that commander's not going to go down. Some damage was dealt. Good damage was dealt. 15 metal per second difference is a major... Actually, 20 now. Holy crap, that's, that's actually a really big difference. I wouldn't say resign, but I'm not surprised that Dying Freud wants to. At all. I mean, that makes sense. I, I would totally think, is there, is, there, is there any way out of this? I don't know if there's any way out of this. Dying Front, however, proxying an Amphib plant over to the southwest, which is a good idea. At least they finally have a factory to help defend the southeast, because that's what they need. They've needed that for the entire game. It's been a problem. But that problem is apparently over now, so... Or at least it will be soon over. I mean, granted, they have nothing to defend. So, yes, that problem is over, in a sense. I mean, there's a lot of ways in which a problem is over by being utterly destroyed. You don't have to worry about it anymore. It's done. It's gone. It's still not a good thing. But counterattack coming in here from the GBC. Dying Front coming in with the Banshees. Doing a decent counterattack, just going for defenders. You need to get more than defenders, but that's where we go. Actually, wind generators. This is the jackpot. Granted, getting rid of metal is good too. But get rid of these wind generators, and that's going to be huge. Actually, get rid of this convict. That's going to be the hugest. There's not a whole lot here. There's nothing here for defense. Nothing at all. In fact, the western team has no, has nothing fast enough to deal with this. And Liko just lost their commander. No, that's Roaches. Never mind. Liko just still has their commander. Those are just Roaches coming in here. But Liko is about to lose their factory. There's nothing here to defend. I mean, the commander is just out of range. The factory will go down before the commander gets there. So, Liko without a factory. Wind generator's going down. That bench, the, the Banshee's getting rid of all the convicts. All the metal extractors going down, too. Western team still has a good economic advantage, but not a production advantage. They need a lot more production coming in here. S3C needs to start building up loads and loads and loads of weavers. Just pure weaver. That's all they can do right now. Because right now... That excess is basically nullifying the entire economic advantage that the Western team has. And the GBC taking back their economic parity, which is now turning into an advantage, which means that GBC is basically turning this around. That was a really smart harassment. And, oh, I see, it's an incomplete Razor, that's why I'm thinking, why is the Razor not attacking? Because it's not yet complete. And S36 Commander about to go down. 
Maybe? Yeah, it's about to go down. Two or three more shots should do it. That's it! S36 loses their commander. This is not the time of the game where it's a big deal, but given that S36 basically has this as build power, like 17 and a half build power, well, 27 and a half build power total, that's it. That's not good. And Liko just now rebuilding a shield bot factory. Putting a decent amount of metal in that, 30 metal per second, which is good. But still, that's a lot of damage that was incurred. And at this point, S36 losing most of their army. GBCs, just or Icons in particular, are going over, just wrecking everything to the north. S36 is probably not going to survive this. I mean, the faster Liko rebuilds, the better. That's pretty much what's going to happen here. It's going to have to happen, at least. Although, Liko not rebuilding with a shield bot factory, just building up defenses. No, I guess a bunch of bandits coming in would do the trick. There is a warrior, of course, but it's mostly Rocco, so the bandits would be able to deal with it, no problem. And, of course, there's a bunch of recluses to deal with the warriors, so that works, too. And, no, S36 actually should be able to push this up. Huh? Okay, I underestimated them. They do have quite a few recluses. That is doing the trick nicely. So, yeah, with all that set up, it should be fine, I think. Hmm. All right, at this point, it looks like Western team way behind economically. That loss over to the southwest was huge. And the GBC managing to rebuild... Getting a grizzly up. There we go. I was wondering when that was going to happen. I mean, the amphib plant, plant, has it been used? There's a couple boys. Oh, five boys. Oh, yeah, it's being used. Being used defensively, actually, quite nicely. And that Cloakybot factory being traded off for a Shieldbot factory. And Brawler's coming in as well, so the GBC basically just setting up for the final attack. Icons going for heavy shields. I mean, they have a shield ball. No, they don't have a shield ball. What am I saying? They have a Cloaky ball. S36 managed to get rid of the Cloaky Ball over to the north, but Liko is much less well defended. I mean, that's the thing here, is that Liko right now basically just has what they're building right now. They have basically 30 or 40 metal per second of production if their cave takers are actually working here, but they do have quite a bit of production if they're pushing it, but still. That's a pretty large ball. I think Liko will be able to hold this off, but it's gonna be at some cost. At a pretty high cost, actually. Or no, never mind. Iken's apparently regrouping. I don't think they're retreating. I think they're just regrouping. Ah, I see. Going down, just securing the south. Wait, why are they going there? That doesn't make sense. They already have that. Oh, I see. Going through the south. Going entirely through the south. Because I guess they assume that the southwest has been rebuilt. No, they know the southwest hasn't been rebuilt. I guess they just want to finish that off. Make that an open lane. Just crack open the path there. And at the same time, S36 doing the exact opposite over to the north. Doing a lot of damage over to the north, in fact. I think that Icons will probably deal with this before it becomes a problem, but yeah, that's a bit of a distraction. As long as Liko can hold this, there's not a whole lot that GBC can do. They haven't really set up to do anything yet. Liko setting up an air, bot, air, air factory, air bot factory. Everything's bots now. Just flying bots. I mean, technically that is true. They are all robotic, but still. It's not quite what I meant. Anyway, yeah, airplane factory will be coming up in about 30 seconds. And at this point, the GBC possibly being forced to retreat somewhat. Crab doing a bit of artillery damage, basically being completely pushed away by the Aspis. Not gonna matter much. The real problem is gonna be, of course, the Venoms. Venom stunning things out, and apparently the Recluses too. That's doing a lot of damage. And at the same time, nice rogue setup here over to the southeast. I mean, it looks like GBC does have this hill. This hill is theirs. They've got a nice little fire base. It's not gonna be easy to break that. But, at the same time, it looks like Icon's taking a huge amount of damage. Yeah, the crab doing a nice job now that the Aspis shield is basically drained. And those recluses are pretty much the right choice. I mean, when you're dealing with a Thug Law Ball, well, Thug fell an Aspis Ball, yeah, recluse is a good choice. It's a very good choice. And the Stinger not complete yet. The worker had been killed before the Stinger was done. It looks like Lika will be possibly able to deal with this. Certainly will be able to get rid of the Stinger, but I think they'll retake the hill. Oh yeah, they're retaking the hill. Ikens retreating from that hill. I mean, they're desperately trying to keep their main base. And it should be okay for the time being, but in a minute we'll see. Because that's it's really going to come down to what's built and what's moved. I mean, the crab's not really going to be able to do a whole lot because of the racketeers. But then again, the recluses are being targeted by the racketeers, leaving the crab open to just do whatever it wants. 
and there aren't a huge amount of recklessness. The Brawler up as well. The Tarantula, however, there to counter it. Should get rid of the Brawler and a couple more missiles, and that's that. But Dynfron coming in to save the day with a Grizzly. I mean, that Grizzly was taking a while to get... Actually, no, that's not the only Grizzly. There's, there's more Grizzlies. Nope, that's it. That apparently was probably being used for offense. I wasn't even paying attention to that. Grizzly to save the day, or at least try. Operative word being try, because that Grizzly is getting hit hard. The Crab is not going down anytime soon. It's taking 500 damage every time that Grizzly fires, which is not what the Grizzly wants to deal. And the Reckless is wiping it out. I mean, the Crab is just tanking it nicely. That's what it needs to do. It's gonna die. But it did its job, and the Grizzly's now also dead, and frankly, for the cost... Okay, it's about even. It's about even. But still, that did a good job. Where's the Tarantula? Oh, shoot, no, the Tarantula's still down, though. And the Venom Redback pair here is not gonna work out. Or group three Redbacks, one Venom. But still, that's not gonna work. So yeah, S36 needs to retreat, needs to regroup, needs to get another army in here. Mostly Tarantulas? No, mostly Recklesses with a couple Tarantulas. But hey, Liko has taken the south side and pretty much creaming the entire south side. There's not a whole lot of defenses haven't been set up. This was a naked expansion. Liko is just wrecking face here. Just rolling over everything. This is being very easy for Liko. S36 in a bit of a stalemate. But I think Liko will probably just deal... I mean, once this Grizzly is dealt with... Although the Grizzly is going to take a while to deal with... It looks like the Grizzly is basically stuck. Liko's probably going to come in here, sweep up to north from the southeast. And once that's all taken care of, I'm guessing GBC might be throwing the towel. Although, what I'm a bit surprised by is a complete lack of Striders. Granted, not totally surprised. We do have Grizzlies, there are Demi Striders in play, so that is a thing. But, Icons could go for Striders. I don't think they will, though. I think they're happy with the Felon Ball. I'm not sure what they build. I mean, there are Striders that would synergize with that very nicely, so... I mean, they could. Funnel webs, basically. Or, of course, they could just have Dante to just deal loads of damage. That works, too. But I don't see that happening. Neither team going for Striders. Which is a little surprising. Also, Lego not really going for a whole lot of planes. I mean, they have the Thunderbird. They have a Vulture. Not a bad thing. And Dynefront's commander under heavy attack. There's not much you can do about this. That commander's dead. That hasn't been upgraded at all. It's in a really bad position. Down it goes. Dynefront losing their commander. And with that, pretty much the ability to rebuild the southeast with impunity. Luckily for Dynefriend, not a whole lot of anti-air in this army. Unluckily for Dynefriend, they don't care, because they're just dealing damage. Mind you, the GBC has so much power, these power plants being destroyed isn't going to be a big deal. Really, the metal is what needs to be destroyed, but at this point, the West team with a 15 metal per second advantage, and that's with GBC reclaiming. So without the reclaim, it'd be even worse. At this point, I don't see a whole lot working out for the GBC. The Grizzly that was here to save the day getting stunned out, Another seven seconds of being stunned out. Fast enough to avoid the shield ball, though. That's the one thing working out in its favor. Because by the time the shield ball gets it, there we go. Finally got to it, but the Grizzly can actually deal some damage again. Not a huge amount of damage, though. Mostly just damaging shields. But a few more shots should do the trick. It'll probably get rid of most of this army in the meantime. Or maybe not. Or maybe the shields will all link up and it actually won't matter. No, in fact, there have been no kills so far. Wow, that Grizzly has been largely ineffective. Are we gonna get a kill? It's just about to fire. It killed something! Hey! That Grizzly actually killed something. How about that? Who knew Grizzlies could kill things? Okay, so the Wasp and Commander down. That Southeast is not getting rebuilt for the rest of the game. Assuming the game even lasts long enough that the Southeast could be reclaimed or retaken, let alone rebuilt. And heck, Liko would have an easier time right now building that southeast than Dynefreund would. At any rate, looks like S36 reattacking that north side, just making sure that Ikens does not get out of their base. I mean, that metal extractor just can't stand. There's just no having it. And this one looks like GBC is being locked down at the center. If this army gets wiped out, which it might not be. I mean, it's all slow. Everything was being slow. No, never mind. The Wyvern coming in here. That should finish it off. And without shields, down goes the Aspas. I mean, thanks to the Thunder... No, the Racketeers, rather. Getting rid of all those shields. That center army's done. There are still a few Grizzlies, though. It's like three Grizzlies on the map. But I don't think that'll be enough. 
I mean, at this point, with Blue Vernon play, and possibly more... I mean, if an air pad's built, that... Oh, an air pad's built! There we go. I'm gonna say, if an air pad's built, because I saw it in the corner of my eye, it just came in my subconscious. But yeah, with this air pad, and the Wyverns, that's basically one Grizzly killed. Because that's 2,000 damage each, so five Wyverns just kill them. And if they're damaged by other things, it only takes four. So yeah, that's basically it. And some Infiltrators as well. Because why not? I mean, you have heavy units. Get the anti-heavy units. So, I mean, at this point, it really just came down to that southeast. That southeast got destroyed twice. And the southwest for blue team, or for rest team, that got destroyed once. That was about it. That wasn't the only thing, obviously. The Grizzlies as well, just the heavy focus on heavy units. There's only so far that can go. What was the excess, by the way? Oh, wow, S36, SX, excess 5,000 metal? Sheesh. Yeah, Dime Throne and S36 both accessed loads of metal. Liko and Ikens are pretty good. Ikens in particular. Hey, I think, well, actually, okay, Ikens didn't have to worry about it because the energy income was being dealt with by their team. So they didn't have to worry about making energy. Although it looks like they actually focus a lot on making energy. So. There was no Mickey! Although I think that's more of a 1v1 thing, because in 2v2 your teammate's going to be helping out, and as a result you're going to get a lot of energy. But hey, it worked out. But yeah, that was a game that seemed like it was basically decided pretty early on. I mean, losing that early economy was a big blow. And the fact that they didn't have, that GBC team rather didn't have a whole lot to the northeast, that or that had a whole lot to the northeast, didn't have a lot to the southeast, so the entire eastern side was fairly open, whereas while there was a lot of damage dealt to the western team, there was a lot of focus over to the southwest, and Liko had kind of taken the center, so in their case, yeah, they lost a bit to the south, they lost the center a bit, but they had something to fall back to, whereas GBC basically lost half of what should have been theirs. So, with that done, we'll have one more match. It's going to be a match between... 400 Size Drum versus Dimefriend and Icons again. So another Dimefriend and Icons game. Let's see if they redeem themselves. It'll be on Hide and Seek. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.